Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Sunday the 23rd of October 2022. Before we get into the video, um, I'd like to apologise for yesterday's video. I know a lot of you um, probably watched the video and couldn't stand it because you uh, the duration of view is quite down so I imagine a lot of you um, couldn't really make out what was being said. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, I just made, I just only realised afterwards and I didn't fancy doing the whole video again because it was quite late as it was. So, apologies for that. Moving on now to four takeaways from Mills' 2-1 win over West Brom. Jed Wallace's return helps fire up the den. This is from londonnewsonline.co.uk. Four mid double. Millwall are up to fifth in the table, now six. I think Swansea won today against Cardiff. Uh, Millwall are up to six in the table after a fourth straight league win, and this is their best start to a season after 16 matches since they won promotion out of League One. Since they won promotion, this is our best start since then. Hmm, interesting. Isn't that interesting? They are on 26 point points, which is two more than the last campaign, which was previously their best return. Other totals at this stage have been 20 in 2020, 21 in 2019, 16 in 2018, 17 in 2017. Only QPR, Swansea and Luton have taken more points than the Lions over the past six matches in D. Wallace helps fire up the den. Jed, Jed Wallace had 32 touches of the ball on Saturday and not a single one of them was without a hefty chorus of boos from the Lions of Fools. The former Millwall attacker had been the subject of multiple charts, not suitable to print here. By the time he was heavily involved in John Swift's goal, which put Albion ahead, breaking down the right wing and sending the ball across for the nine, number 19 to finish, uh, Wallace celebrated in front of the cold blow lane in. In hindsight, it might be a regret, not least because it only served to pump up the home supporters. The noise levels were the best they have been down the den this season, and that ferocity arguably coaxed. Andrew Madley into giving some decisions in Ali's favour. Uh, I haven't had the benefit of a replay, but those who did felt that there was minimal contact, if any, on Scott Malone for the free kick, which led to Callum Styles' equaliser. Yes, indeed. Uh, Scott Malone, um, he, he got away with that one, and uh, we ended up getting a goal, so lovely jubbly. Uh, Malone excels. Injuries open the door for Scott Malone. To get back into Mill's starting lineup, and boy has he taken it. The 31 year old left back has been excellent in the 3 0 victory over Watford on Wednesday night, and I'll say he was man of the match yesterday, not only for his defensive work, but also the way he linked so well with Tyler Berry after the match winner came on. Uh, Malone had the upper hand in any battles with Jed Wallace, which was one of the talking points uh, before the game. What, how good defensively could Malone be? against Jed Wallace and he did all right didn't he? he he did pretty good and made a great challenge on his former teammate when Albion threatened the counter in the second half uh, he completed the most passes 72 of any player on the pitch and Malone had been left out of Mill's matchday squad for their for three successive matches before Murray Wallace was ruled out and that's it when you, when you find yourself left out of the team or even left out of the squad and you get a chance to come back in step up Take, grab it with both hands. Uh, Burry impacts off the bench. Mill manager Gary Rout felt that his side wore down the baggies, and the introduction of fresh legs in Tyler Burry, Mason Bennett, George Honeyman, and Bennett Foley were factor in that. Yes, indeed, some attacking substitutions, please. Uh, it certainly looked a shrewd call, in particular, to bring on Burry for Andreas Vogel summer in the 58th minute. At the moment, the former AFC Wimbledon the youngster perhaps tends to impact matches more. When he comes on and there is more space against fatigued opposition. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're we're we are living in the era of five substitution. Um I noticed uh, was it uh in the Watford game, Mason Bennett, he seemed really he looked really sad when he came off. I'm like, don't be sad. You assisted a goal, you played a fair number of minutes. Now it's you go off, someone comes on with fresh legs, and we go at them again. Just don't be sad, mate. Uh, Burry steps inside to whip one right-footed narrow shot, narrowly wide at the far right, 
and had another finish ruled out for offside. Ironically, his weakest attempt managed to deceive Alex Palmer at the in near post in the 90th minute. Yeah, that was a bit of a strange one. You can only say that. Uh, so this is the one. I think this is the one that was. Um, this is the one that. This is the one that went in and was offside. I think. Because he go, he's going in the the uh, corner there. So I think when he was in the same situation later on, the goal he probably thought he was going to do the same and put it in that far corner. Instead, he went the other way and put it in the other corner. Some are saying some people are saying he may have scuffed it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll have to see. Maybe they'll ask him in an interview this week. But I don't know. Has he has he done any interviews? I don't remember him really doing it. No, he did did do an interview a long while ago when he first came into the team. But since then, not much. But we will see. We will see. So those are the um, four takeaways from Millwall's two-one win over West Brom. From the South London Press's website. Um, so now we're going to have some more post match comments from Gary Rowett. Uh, this one is also from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. Mill boss explains reason match winning uh, Tyler Burry didn't start in 2 1 victory over West Brom. Gary Rowett has revealed he toyed with the idea of starting Tyler Burry Mill's win over West Brom, but eventually decided the attacker would best impact the match coming off the bench. The 21 year old scored his first goal of the season. Uh, as his 90th minute finish pass Alex Palmer uh, proved to be the clincher. It was the Lions' full straight championship win, moved them up to fifth in the table. We had to make some changes today, said Mill Boss Gary. I thought Benno would struggle to go again. Uh, Sav, he was ill last night, he was sick. He typified the squad when he rang me this morning and said, I'm desperate to play, just let me get out of there. I just felt it was too big a call after Wednesday and I decided to keep them away. Uh, the players that came in did really, really well. I very nearly started Tyler. I felt it was a similar type of game to Watford early on. A little bit scrappy. I just didn't feel that it was really Tyler's type of game. What he is very, very good at is when the game starts to get a little bit more open and defend players start to get a little bit tired. Uh, to have Benikafobi, Tyler Berry, Mason Bennett and George Honeyman to bring on, those type of attacking players that start testing them in the 80th minute, 85th minute, sometimes that is what wins you the game as much as the first period. Very weird of Gary Ray. He normally gives them nicknames. Huh? So I don't know if these players don't have nicknames. No, Benno. Mason Bennett is Benno, isn't he? George Honey. What would his nickname be? The Honey Monster? I don't know. Uh, Charlie Cresswell replaced Sean Hutchinson at the start of the second half. The centre back falls off the hamstring injury. It was the Leeds Loney's first minute since the defeat of Blackburn at the start of the month. Cressy showed a lot of character coming on after a tough period outside, said Ray. He worked really hard. He's got his rewards because he played. He gave us a little bit of composure on the ball. Yeah, he did do quite well when he came on. And again, same with Malone. It, when you find yourself out of the team, when you get when you get back in and you get a chance, grab it. Make the most of it. So, moving on to more from Gary Rout. He's got a light-hearted response when asked about his informed side sending out message to Championship. Also from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk, uh, Gary Rout has been quick to dismiss reading anything into Mill's move up the championship table, despite Saturday's 2-1 win, a 2-1 victory uh, over West Brom, taking them into the playoffs. Um, the Lions have won four in a row to power up the standings. But asked if he was about, asked, asked if it was about being up there and sending out a message, Rout replied. No, no, no. All I care about is the UFC style at 3 o'clock. So I'm hoping to get out of here as quickly as possible to get on a train and watch that, if I'm being honest. Uh, I've been second in January in the championship and people talked about me going to get promoted this year. And that was a derby uh, where they lost to Fulham in the playoff semi-final. I've seen how it works. You, you've seen how easy it goes from position where we're getting a little bit of stick. All of a sudden, I'm sure that everyone is really, really positive. As a manager, you have to find a little bit of balance somewhere. I won't worry too much. Uh, I might enjoy my glass of wine a little bit more tonight, but that's about it. My focus really is on the next game and see if we can maintain the energy levels. I think that's the most important bit. If we play with the same energy and that same desire, in some games we won't play with the right quality, but we'll be really hard to beat and really hard to play against. That's what we proved this week. Indeed. So the next game, Huddersfield away. 
we'll see how that goes. Um, now, the last um, comment I think from Gary Rowe is about the injuries that are coming up. So, this is also from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. Mill defender not expected back until after the Championship's World Cup enforced uh, international break. So, that would be 3rd of December, Sunderland game. Um, so, that's a long time, just over a month. So, Mill manager Gary Rowe is not expecting Sean Hudson to be back until after the Championship's mid-season break for the World Cup. Uh, the Lions centre-back came off in the second half of Saturday's 2-1 victory over West Bromwich Albion. Leeds alone need Charlie Cressel, who had been absent from recent match day squads, replaced the Geordie. I think he's just felt his hamstring, said Rat. On a first look, he didn't feel it was too severe, but of course we felt that with Lenny, or we had it scanned, it was a really bad one. So I'll reserve judgement. Fingers crossed it's not too bad, but I'd imagine that any injury at this point probably takes you out until the international break. We've got players champing at the bit. Uh, we'll have to crack on, won't we? Indeed. Now, Craswell did well coming in. Can he start the next game and do the same? And who's the backup? Is George Evans a backup? Can he play centre back in a two man, two man defence? Two in a two centre back, um, four man defence. I'm not too sure about that. I would probably believe that Ryan Leonard could do it. Um, so who's the um, who plays there now then? If if another we get another defender injured because we've got Murray Wallace injured, we've got Sean Hudson injured. Uh, we have Aidan Muller uh, somewhere around, and um, we have uh, obviously Alex Mitchell doing pretty well up in St Johnston, Scotland. Will they call him back? Who knows? Um, don't think they're probably not allowed to call him back until January, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, so before we get into the stats from yesterday's game. Uh, I just wanted to show you now. The under 21s are supposed to have a game tomorrow morning, Mond uh, tomorrow afternoon, Monday. But I don't know. Have you seen the weather today? It was apocalyptic, wasn't it? All that lightning, thunder, lashing down with rain. Um, it was insane. Uh, it was in the south. I don't know what it was like in South Wales. But this was due to take place at Swansea's training centre. 14 hours to go. Um, wouldn't surprise me if it was postponed because of weather, but you never know. I don't know. Maybe it'll just be a bit wet and a bit boggy and they'll just crack on. But uh, we shall see. So now we're going to get into the stats from yesterday's game. We're going to start off with info.gold.net. If you look in the middle above the red FT, you can see the XG from yesterday's game. 1.47 to 0.5. So we did really well, and we did really well defensively to... Restrict West Brom to 0.5 xG and to um, keep them from scoring any more goals. Uh, they could have had another goal. Absolute horrendous kind of back pass from from Zion Fleming. He was, he was a really he had a really off, off game yesterday. Um, he tried to pass it back. To, I think to Jay Cooper. I think he tried to put it onto his left foot. Jake Cooper's left footed, so he tried to put it like to the left of him, but he hit it too hard and literally went straight past him. And who runs onto it? Jared Wallace. And then George Lung comes out and does kung fu, kung fu uh, save and kicks it off into the stand. So it could have been a could have been a lot worse. So here's the match events. Obviously they scored first. Um, obviously first time in the season I believe we won from a losing position. Um, and then we equalised just before last time, which is good. And then we score right at the end of the game, which is even better. And here's the various match events. We had one booking Billy Mitchell quite early on, so the fact that he got through the game and didn't get in any more trouble, unlike the uh, their fellow who got booked and obviously got sent off at the end. But you can see we made the full uh, five substitutions, and they made four. So there you go. And Infogold.net have a shot map, which I really like. So here are Mill's attempts on goal. Um, quite interesting, quite interesting. 
Um, our best chance was not even scored. It was Tom Bradshaw on the 58th minute, which no one's really talking about, but um, that's okay. The two goals we did score, that one there, Tyler Burry, it's a 6% chance. That one there from Callum Stars, which he did, made, did really well. I mean, you must have seen it by now if you've seen the highlights. If you're watching this on YouTube, just go to uh, West Brom's YouTube channel. We've got, I think maybe Mills' YouTube channel by now. Might have it on. Uh, Callum Stiles, the ball deflects off a West Brom player. Hits another West Brom player, starts going towards goal. Uh, Callum Stiles realises, I can't take a touch and then turn. So he just lets the ball run through his legs and then jumps jumps around and then hits it. Absolutely brilliant to be that quick thinking and to do that. It's amazing. Um, here are West Brom Mijaldian's shots on goal. Isn't that great? See the difference there? How many have we? We've got like 15 there. Must be 15 so. I'm not going to count them all, but. Us attacking, them attacking. Not only that, but look how small the chances are. Because the smaller the circle, the lower the quality of the chance. That's why they got low XG. And this has happened time and time again. I believe they had two shots on target. Which is, uh, since the formation change, it has been averaging one shot per target uh, for the opposition using this new, new formation. Um, so, first half, there are chances. We're taking quite a few long shots. Um, Styles, Billy Mitchell, Zion Fleming, and I can't even click on this one, it's so small. Let's stop below. Okay, and then there, there they are with their three, and one of them was a goal. The second half, boom. Still, um, like I said, West Brom got the most amount of draws in the championship, and you can see why they got pretty um, decent defence. Um, but when they got down to 10 men and we we just brought on all these fresh attacking players, I mean, it was it was a matter of like when and if, like if, if we had enough time on the clock to uh, get going. And there they are again in the second half. Look, few and far between for West Brom Jalia. And they keep trying to get these shots away in the centre of the, the uh, area. So obviously trying to do a bit of build up play and like, instead of not really working. Um, let's move on now to whoscored.com and funnily enough the uh, top rated player from yesterday's match was John Swift with 7.4 and just ahead of Tyler Burry with 7.3 which is interesting because like I've, I've said this many times if you're a substitute and you came, you come on and get a high score that is very very good because obviously you've got less minutes on the pitch to do things to get a high score. So we'll see what that's all about later on. So Millwall created a high number of chances relative to their possession with effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from set pieces were strong at finishing. And Millwall had no significant weaknesses. Uh, we favoured long shots attack through the middle, had a high shot frequency when in possession, and favoured long balls. And he, look, yeah, 18. It wasn't 15, it was 18. We had 18 attempts on goal, they had 8. 12 to 6 in open play, 6 to 2 set pieces. And we had 18 shots, 2 goals, that's an 11% conversion rate, which is less than them, because we restricted them to 8 shots on, on, top, on, uh, on goal, and only they had only scored one of them, so that's 12%. So our finishing was a bit off, actually, because... Going by the last three games, that would have been up to like fifteen uh, percent. So probably should have come on a three one. Um, well, if you got Brad, if Bradshaw's attempt went in, and if Tyler's one was an offside, it would have been three or four one. So, but here are the uh, situations you can see uh, attacking. They were going down the wings, and we were just mixing it up really. Shot directions. Uh, shot zones, action zones, yeah, it's home third, 22%. Not really anything happening there, was it? 
player positions. There you go. Very uh, regimented from West Brom. And Mill players in the middle kind of over overlapping each other. Uh, Bradshaw, uh, Fleming. Uh, Billy Mitchell, which you can't see, he's, he's under the 21. Um, so, yeah, interesting stuff. And of course, Malone playing further forward. Um, so even in that um, back, uh, back four, he's still going further forward, which is interesting to see. Um, now, moving on to Match Centre from WhoScored.com. So they're having match events again. Uh, Jason Mullenby got on the pitch. Also, former, former Mill player, kind of. He's on loan. Uh, we tried to buy him and uh, bid got knocked back. So, what can you do? Now he's at West Brom and, and look, facing the relegation to League One. Interesting stuff, isn't it? Funny how uh, life pans out. If you look at the top left and right where the club badges are, you can see the average player ratings for each side. It's 6.54 for Millwall. 6.464 West Brom. The crowd yesterday was 15,212 and they were very loud. Very, very loud. So here we go. So Callum Style of the starting 11, Callum Styles obviously scored a goal, so that, that's um, bumps his rating up. Um, and then we've got McNamara and Malone, 6.8. Obviously. They had a lot of defending to do with West Brom going down the wings, so that helped them get a high score. Fleming, only 6.1, and lowest rated along with George Long. And you can see the subs coming on. Uh, Cresswell came on for Hutchison, got a better score than him. So we'll see about that later, but let's have a look at total shots. Who had the shots? So there you go, there are the shot takers. So Styles with two shots, one goal. Burry with three shots, one goal. And uh, there you go. Uh, possession. That's a lot of possession for us. We're normally not that high. 46.6 versus 53.4. And the player mostly on the ball was mostly Scott Malone. 6.8% of the match time was in his possession. And uh, yeah. And a couple of the other defenders quite held high as well. Obviously, no George Savile, so he would normally be one to get on the ball as well. Um, pass success percentage 68% to 73. Zion Fleming 47, that's way down. Bogle Summer as well 45. Did they get special treatment yesterday? Why was there. They, were they a bit knackered? Because I don't know. Um, weird. They both um, miss passing a lot. So Billy Mitchell 84. He's normally always the one with uh, the best. Um, Shackleton 81. That's pretty decent as well. We'll see how many passes they had. Um, George Long 37. Back up from the Watford game. What game is a bit shit for him. Uh, dribbles four to three. Uh, aerials one twenty one to forty three. Holy, holy! So playing the long ball didn't really work out. Um, O'Shea with ten aerial one, Bartley with thirteen. Um, so pretty good to have to have that geezer sent off then, wasn't it? Um, yes, very fortuitous. Bradshaw won five aerials yesterday. Nice um, tackles. We actually won the tackles thirteen to eight. Everyone of the starting eleven for me all had a, won a tackle, except for Cooper and Fleming. Jed Wallace won two. Okay. Uh, corners five to two. Uh, dispossess four to eight. Dispossess is having the ball taken off of you, but not a tackle. Oh. Yes, and Jed Wallace free. <laughs> now, moving on to the list of stats. 
Um, <laughs> here's the mill players rated by ranked in rating order. Uh, Tyler Berry came on 57 minutes, so he's had, uh, what was it, 30 something minutes on the pitch. 7.27, highest rated mill play yesterday. Uh, behind, uh, just ahead of Callum Styles, 7.17. Benekophobi 6.85. Interesting. So three of the subs. Interesting. So this is kind of interesting. The, of the top rated mill players yesterday, three of the top five are substitutes. Which kind of suggests that what the starting eleven wasn't really doing it, or the players who came off the bit bench had something to prove. Although Tyler Burry, he was doing all right, but I think it was kind of like uh, tactical uh, situation. And for the for the uh, Watford game, it was Mason Bennett. I think they wanted him there to help Scott Malone defend. Yeah, he has a bit more energy doing that. He's more physical as well. Um, and then they switched him out for uh, Callum Styles in this game because, like, why not? Like. What's Callum Styles done wrong? Not nothing really. Um, and he comes in and he scores a goal. And I, oh, yeah, great. So just goes to show players being left out and then coming back in. Got something to prove. Get a decent score, even if they come off the bench. Um, lowest uh, lowest rated players. Uh, Zion Fleming, six point zero six. Bit of a stinker for him yesterday. Four shots, zero on target, and a passing. Success percentage of 47.4. Oosh, 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 oosh. Um, yeah. So, lowest rated of all, even the substitute George Honeyman, who had about eight minutes on the pitch. Crazy, 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 crazy. Um, so let's roll through who had the most touches for Millwall. Scott Malone, 87, way above next player Danny McNamara and he's way above Jake Cooper and then it's kind of great goes off slightly interesting so obviously they've carried on using the left hand side to, to get the ball out of the defence and up whereas before they were using the right hand side of Hutchinson when it was a back three centre backs so they're carrying that on so offensively so how many shots did we have? Is this going to load today? Are you serious right now? Oh, here we go. Right. How many shots did we have on target? We had 18 shots. How many were on target? Doesn't look like a lot, does it? Like three or four? So here's Zion Fleming with four. So we've got nine different players having shots. Only three shots on target. So yeah, they were a bit off. They were a bit off yesterday. That's probably why mate uh, Benikafobi got a decent score. He had one shot and he was on target. He, he had three key passes, so that's that's not good, is it? I had to have eighteen shots and then three on target. A bit weird. So when Zion's off, when he's he's not he's not on it, it kind of um we can't kind of struggle a bit. We have to like grind it out, which is um, not unsettling. It's just a bit okay. If Zion's not performing, we need other people to step up. And of, of yesterday they did, which is good. It's good that you, it's good when you can play badly and still win the game. Um, defensively, who did the defensive work? Tackles most Billy Mitchell uh, with three. His defensive uh, stuff pretty decent. Three tackles, two interceptions. Um, but you got nine different players having tackles, which is what you want to see, isn't it? Uh, interceptions. Who was top of that? Danny McNamara. Look at Danny McNamara's line. Two tackles, two, pretty three interceptions, two clearances. Decent stuff. Fantastic. Uh, who had the most clearances? Four different players. Two each, so Charlie Cressel comes on. He doesn't win a tackle, but he's got two interceptions, two clearances. So, block shots. Who's blocking shots? Jay Cooper and Scott Malone. Um, yeah, good stuff. 
So we had we blocked four of their shots. So they only had eight shots. Four of them were blocked. One went in. I don't know what happened to the other three. Eh? You know, um, I guess the keeper must have saved them. Shall we see what happened to their shots? How many did they have on target? Um, so they only. So they only had. They didn't have a player who had more than two sh uh, two shots. They got eight players with one. And they only had two shots on target. One of them went in. So the other one must have been saved. So they had eight shots, four were blocked. Uh, one went in and one was saved. Ah, okay. Uh, moving on to passing stuff. Uh, who had the most passes? Scott Malone, 45. Um, but yeah, again, Billy Mitchell stand out. So he does. He doesn't have the most passes. He's got 38. His accuracy is 84.2. And then you've got James Shafton, 32, 81.3. Pretty decent. And Char Charlie Cresswell. And again, he had. What was the game where he caused it? Was it Sheffield United where he, his pass was poor and then they ended up scoring? So obviously, like being left that he left out of the squad. He's come in and he's like. I've got to get fucking serious here because I'm dying in my arse here. I mean, I need to sort myself out. And he's come in and he did it. It's, it's good to see. Um, crosses and accurate crosses. Uh, 11 and 2. Scott Malone. That's not too good. Tyler very 3 and 0. So the crossing not really finding a mill player. Obviously, we, we saw in the previous graphic about how many aerials um, West Brom were winning with Bartley and O'Shea? So obviously they're getting they're getting on the crosses and hitting them away. Um, long balls and accurate long balls. George Long and most long balls. Obviously twenty two and five. That's not very good. Um, Sixteen and six for Malone. Twelve and two for Cope, uh, Cooper. Charlie Cressel minus six. That's very good. Uh, Callum Styles four and three, not bad. So there you go. Now I did this in yesterday's video, but obviously with the audio situation, I'm gonna um, give it a go again because uh, you probably didn't see this because it was right at the end of the video. And this is a stats video. So here we go. Here's the stats. Now this is the table, championship table. Uh, we're now in six because Swansea won today, beating Cardiff by. I think it's up here actually. Oh, they won 2 0. No, two, they were uh, sending off for Cardiff and Luton. So there you go. But, um, so Luton were doing really well. Um, we smashed Watford 3 0. And then Watford smashed Luton 4 0. This league's crazy now. So here we are. Um, here's the table with 6 on 26 points. Uh, we've got a positive goal difference of plus three. And yeah, it's all looking good, isn't it? Four wins in a row. Should be five next week, but yeah, you got to turn up and you got to play. It's Huddersfield away, which let's just remind us where Huddersfield they are. Uh, they're bottom of the league. they got a very small budget. And they're kind of struggling, actually. A lot of Northern teams are struggling this year with finances. Um... I guess it is what it is, isn't it? Um, but what I wanted to show you, uh, and it was in yesterday's video, but I'm, like I said, I'm doing a repeat. Custom dates. So, third of the tenth to present day. We're top of the table. Even though we played one less game than Blackburn. Why, why third of the tenth? Because that was before the Rotherham game and after the Blackburn game. This is when it happened. The formation change against Rotherham and then Middlesbrough, Bristol City, Watford and now West Bromwich Albion. Those five games. We're top of the, top of the table in, 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 uh, since we changed formation. This is promotion form. Not playoff form, promotion form. And it's happened so drastically. Um, 
and it's it's not coincidental because of sing singularity the singularity of the players and the management having a meeting having a word and saying look you need to sort this out and then we sit we come out with a 4-2-3-1 against Rotherham they get a draw because the referee gives them a penalty and that was their only shot on target and then we've gone strength by strength by strength uh, winning against Bristol City our first away win in some time um, hat trick for Bradshaw against Watford first hat trick I think since Matt Smith in, against Nottingham Forest uh, I think probably two years ago was that that was just before COVID wasn't it it was that March 2020 so I mean it's all it's all getting better it's getting better every day as Paul McCartney sang since we changed this formation, we are the best team in the league. And all it took was for Gower out to listen, not to the fans. I'm pretty sure he doesn't give a shit about the fans, um, even though they watch a lot of football. They watch a lot of Millwall playing football over many, many years. So a lot of them actually know what the fuck they're talking about. But after that Blackburn game, apparently, according to Billy Mitchell in the interview he gave to the papers, they had a meeting and they said, like, well, what the fuck's going on? This is fucking insane. And then they changed the formation. And here we are. We've only conceded three goals. We've scored ten. We are in promotion form. Why can we not get promoted now? Why can we not why can we not win the league? Why not? This new form of formation. Now here's the thing. How good is it? How good is it? Because when we played away at Sheffield United, when we played at home to QPR, at home to Reading, who are, are they still up there? And it dropped off to eighth. But when we played at home to Reading, when we played at home to QPR, when we played away to Sheffield United, when we played away to Burnley, when we played away to Norwich, who was seventh, we were still on the old shitty formation. So we don't know how good we really are. Because against those better teams, we weren't playing attacking football, we weren't playing with high intensity up further up the pitch that we, we are now we were playing the old shitty way so we we, we want to believe that we can win the league now we've playing this better formation we still don't know we still don't know because none of the teams we've played this month have been any good have we? Well, who have we played? we played West Brom they're shit they're in 23rd for a reason they've, they've drawn the most games in the league 8 Funnily enough, I get the same amount as Burnley. But Burnley have won seven. And Burnley have, haven't um, lost the game in 13. Um, so we played West Brom. We played Middlesbrough. We played... Who did we play? Bristol City. They're all right. They're 13th. That's not bad. We played Watford. A bit patchy. And we played Rotherham. Who... Where the fuck are they? There, twelve. So we're playing. We're playing a lot. Of, most teams in the bottom half of the table, except for Watford. So maybe the formation works against shit teams. Maybe it doesn't work against really good teams. Um. So we'll have to see. When do we play a really good team next? If we go to the first team fixtures in the wall, when will that be? Um, here's the thing, do we need to beat the top teams if we draw against them? So we've got, we've got Birmingham, Hull, and then Preston. I think Preston's probably the next best team that we play. Um, where are they? They're 11th, but again, that's kind of like, that's similar to where Rob and Moore are. But it's out of their place, it's an away game for us, so again, that will be a hard game. But we've got Birmingham, we've got Hull. Again. 
not really good teams, are they? So can't really gauge how good the formation change will be. Then we got Sunderland, Wigan, Luton. Sunderland again. Sunderland, Wigan, Luton. So maybe we have to wait until that Luton game. Until we can start actually um, believing. If we'd play well in that with the 4 2 3 1, we might actually fucking win this league then. Huh? And then we play Watford again. So we're going around again. We're playing the teams that we've already played. So I think probably by the time we've played a Luton game, that's us playing everyone then, yeah? So after that, so that's another thing. After that Luton game, we probably would have played every team in the league at least once. And after that, if we're in the top five by then, top six, after we've played every single team once, we've got to start to think, this might be our season. And I, if you haven't already, I would highly suggest um, buying a membership or buying a half season ticket. Um, because I don't know if you remembered trying to get tickets for the FA Cup final and FA Cup semi final and things like that. Um, that's going to be every week in a Premier League next season. So you need to get your loyalty points, you need to get priority. Even if you want a little taste, and I'm not even talking about going to every game. Obviously, if you buy a season ticket, they might even stop selling season tickets next season if we get promoted. It might just be to um, people who are already on the list. You can't just turn up. They'll ask you, did you have a season ticket last year? Did you have a membership last year? Well, sorry, like we're not. We want to re reward our loyal fans. They're first in the queue. So you might struggle to get. Uh, to any of these games next season if we're in the Premier League against games what games would you want to see in the Premier League Arsenal Man United um, Tottenham Chelsea but so just a little thing if you start to believe and you start to think and you start to, to wonder if it could be happening just give a little think, forward planning, buy a membership, buy a half season ticket, um, get get your foot in the door for next season, or get your foot in the door for the end of the season playoff tickets if we go that route. Um, you want to get the tickets, and you don't want to have to rely on other people who have season tickets and members who you or your friends with to, to help you out. And on that note, thank you for watching. And goodbye.